Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father Yah, we come to you today asking that you will open up our hearts, open up our minds, open up all communication pathways that we may hear your word, that your word may enter our spirit and help uplift us to be the children that you would have us to be in these end times. In your son's name we pray, amen, and so be it. Hey y'all, Miss Coach in the Fight here, talking about the paraclete, we're talking about the comforter. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the Elijah Spirit. And in today's class, we're going to be looking at some verses out of the gospel according to John according and 1 John. And we're going to also be looking in the Third Testament of the Bible and the Old Testament of the Bible as we present some new information as far as who the Comforter is. Um, we hear about this Comforter over there in First John for the first time. I think the uh, Greek word that was used was parakletos. Um, many of us call him the paraclete, talking about that Holy Spirit. Um, so we have that information that was given to us in uh, by John in his gospel and in his first epistle. But there is some additional information about this comforting spirit that we can use to understand who this guy is, who this Holy Spirit is, who this um, this this being is um, that's supposed to come to be with us in the end times. And towards the end of the video, Lord willing, we're going to show what it is that we are supposed to do to ensure that we do have the visitation of this comforting spirit. We're going to get that information out of the Old Testament. In fact, the book of Malachi. All right, so let's jump right into it. Now, the first time that we're going to see uh, the paracletos or the paraclete um, or called the comforter is in the gospel according to John in chapter 14 and uh, verse 16. It says, and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Now, of course, this is the Messiah who is talking to the disciples. Um the reason why we only hear about this sermon is in the Gospel of John um, was because John was the only one that recorded that sermon. This is the sermon that was given after the Last Supper. And for some reason, Matthew, Mark and Luke didn't include that sermon that was given um, after the Last Supper in their Gospels. But we can read all about that um, in or around John in chapter 14. I'm not sure exactly which chapter it starts on, but I know it spans about three chapters. Um, but we see here he's talking about the comforter and what he's telling his disciples is that in order for them to receive this, this comforter, um, he, the Messiah is actually going to have to go away. Once he goes away, um, remember this is the, the day before he died. Once he was put on the cross, um, resurrected and uh, ascended into heaven, he would be able to send back the comforting spirit. And we know that's exactly what happened when we look over in the book of Acts. I think it's in chapter one. Um, let's jump down to, I think it's uh, verse 36. No, verse 26, it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So we understand the story. We at least we should understand the story before the Messiah came to be in the flesh, the word made flesh, the only communication that humans had with the father was external that's why you hear in the old testament how the father was talking to people in an audible tone where even people around them would hear it they might not have understood what they were hearing but they did hear um the voice of god um, and that's because he had to talk through an audible tone. But you remember when the Messiah came on the scene, the first thing he said 
was that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And what he was referring to is the ability, that new ability for this Holy Spirit to dwell in man. That's what John the Baptist was doing over there with the uh, baptism in water and all of that that was preparing man so that he could, for the first time, have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, have this Holy Spirit to come and live within him. Okay, so we also note in here where it says the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is the Comforting Spirit. Now, we are going to go into more detail. We're going to find out who who this is. We're going to get a little more detail as to who this, this individual is. But we do know from this verse that the Comforter and the Holy Spirit are one and the same. So when you hear some people, especially over at the, um, what church is at, the Holiness Church or the Pentecostals, um, a lot of members, if not all of the members of the Pentecostal Church will claim they have the Holy Ghost or they will claim they have the Holy Spirit. Well, this what they is talking about is the comforting spirit that we're reading about over here in John in chapter 14. Like we said before, one of the main things that the Messiah did for us is allowing this Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost to dwell in us. This is the first time that this has ever happened in all of humanity, 4,000 years of human history. No one had the uh, Holy Spirit to, you know, any large degree um, before, the before the Christ and before John the Baptist. He goes on to says, whom the father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So these are giving us some hints. John's going to talk a little bit more um, about this in his epistle, but it's saying that he shall, uh, the father will send the Holy Spirit in my name. So the Holy Ghost is coming in the name of the Messiah. That's important. He says, he shall teach you all things. So this is what this Holy Spirit, this Holy Ghost is doing in us is he's actually teaching us those things um, from that the father would have us to know, many of which we know comes out of the scripture. And he says, and will bring all things to your remembrance. Now, a lot of... Uh, Speaking from personal experience, um, when it's talking about bringing all things to remembrance, it's talking about, you know, how we can find ourselves in certain situations where we need scriptural help. And all of a sudden that scripture will come to us Some seemingly out of the blue, you know, a scripture and a verse will pop in our head that we can go back to and gain that truth that, you know, we had learned beforehand, but the Father, through the Holy Spirit, will bring that scripture back to us in that time of need. And that's what he's talking about there. All right, we're going to come back to those two verses out of chapter 14 here in a second, because there we do have some more information that we can um, compare with those two verses. But let's get through the other uh, three verses that talks about the comforting spirit. Um, the next one is in John and chapter 15. It says, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the father, he shall testify of me. So now this is saying almost the exact same thing that we saw in the previous chapter 14 is saying that this will be the spirit of truth. And that's what it was saying about bringing things to our remembrance and teaching us over there in chapter 14. It says, um, and he shall testify of me, meaning that he's coming in his name, talking about this comforting spirit. But notice this part right here. He says, whom I will send unto you from the father. So this is the Messiah who is actually sending the comforter, the Holy Spirit from the father by way of the father. Now, if you like me and you recognize that the uh the Father, the Son, or the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit are the same individual, um, then it's really easy to understand when it, when the Messiah, the Word, of, is talking how he's going to actually send the Holy Spirit because this is actually the Father sending the Holy Spirit in his own name. 
All right. So let's jump over and look at another verse coming out of John chapter 16 and verse 17. Uh, verse 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Again, this is talking about how the Messiah had to go away first. He had to, you know, while he was there with the, the disciples, the apostles, they had the Holy Spirit, right? They had the Holy Spirit because they had the Messiah in the flesh. They had this comforting spirit in the flesh that they could actually see and touch and kiss and do whatever they wanted to do because he was in human form. Well, if it had not been um, part of the plan that he would go away, that he would ascend into the spirit world, that he would be translated like Elijah and Enoch, then the comforting spirit would not be made available to the rest of humanity. Only those apostles, those 12 or those uh, 72 individuals back then would have had the um, opportunity to um, um, uh, communicate, talk with the, the comforting spirit. But because when he went away, that made it available to the rest of us. All right, so we're going to come back to uh, the gospel according to John in a minute, but let's look at his first epistle in chapter two. Verse one says, my little children, these things write out unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate for the father, Jesus Christ, our righteousness or the righteous. Um, now we're talking about the paraclete. We don't see those words used here. Those are Greek words. If you go to the Greek text, that's what you actually see is the word paraclete. But going to the Greek text is how we know that when it's talking, when it says an advocate here is actually talking about the same paraclete, talking about the same comforter. That word paraclete is only used five times in the entire Bible. We saw four of them over in the gospel according to John and the fifth time over here in John's first epistle. But notice right here, he's telling us who this comforter here is, who this advocate is. It says, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So now this is going to become really important towards the end of this video as we tie all of this together. But note for now that he's saying that the advocate or the paraclete or the comforter is Jesus Christ. So when the Messiah was telling them that, you know, he he must go away so that he can send the comforter back to him, what he was talking about was leaving in a fleshly state so that he could send the spirit back. The comforter now is a spirit being that can dwell in all men all around the world, whereas the Messiah was kind of limited to those um Jerusalem over there where the disciples were uh, all those many years ago. So the comforter is Jesus Christ. Well, let me show you some additional information coming from the third testament of the Bible. It actually goes in um, and talks about this a little bit further in a little bit more detail, talking about the third testament of the Bible. Now, many of you may not have heard about this book. Um, you can find a link to it on Google if you type in thirdtestament.pdf and look for a website called jesus-comes.com. You can download this PDF to your computer. We also offer a link in the description. But in here, we're going to um, look for the word comforter in, in the Third Testament because it provides some additional information for us. But we're going to start off with one verse in particular um, coming out of chapter 4 of the Third Testament. Because it's kind of backing up what we heard about over there in First uh, John. It is actually chapter 1 out of the Third Testament. And we're going to read verse 49. It says, So I said to you in that time, 
what I have told you is not all that I have to teach you. For you to know all, first I must go away in order to send you the spirit of truth to make clear what I have said and what I have done. Now, I'm going to start right here because, you know, this is referring back to what we heard about over in, there in John. Um, he said that he had to go away. He was going to send back the comforter and this comforter was going to be our teacher, mainly because, you know, there was some additional lessons that, you know, we would have to learn. And it's very good to have a uh, teacher that can, you know, dwell inside, dwell with us so directly and teach us, you know, in times of need. But it goes on to says, um, I promised you the comforter in the times of trial and that comforter, that explainer is I. Myself returning to illuminate you and help you to understand the past lessons as well as the new ones that I bring to you. Okay, now again, he, he was he, we were told in the New Testament that he, this comforter would be our teacher, would be our instructor, would be our explainer or our guide. It says right here, um, to illuminate you, to help you to understand the past lessons. Those past lessons are the Old Testament. Um, it, we're, we're speaking from the third Testament right now. That's what you're looking at on the screen. Um, if you aren't familiar with this book, let me be the first to tell you that it has the spirit and truth that we was promised to help us to understand those things that we learned from Moses over there, the Mosaic law, as well as the new Testament, you know, this book helped clarify a lot of what was going on over there. This is the third part of the trilogy. Um, we give a lot of classes on this channel, um, talking about the background of it and, and that, but I would just advise you to try the spirit by the spirit to actually download the, uh, book or look at the outer your book listen to the audio book and for yourself so that you can you know know that this is spirit and truth this is the word of god the inspired word of god this is the third testament but anyway let's come back over here at the beginning of uh verse 49 it says i promise to you the comforter in the times of trial now let's remember that we're going, to, we're going to talk about this when we jump over in the book of Malachi. We're, we're going to hear about these times of trial, and that's going to be what's going to help us make the connection between the comforter and the Elijah spirit. Um, he's going to send during the, the time of trial, and he says, and that comforter, that explainer is I, talking about the messiah talking about the father this book is actually written in the first person with the father doing all of the talking so he says this comforter is i myself but that's exactly what we read about or heard about over there in first john and chapter two that the comforter and the messiah and the father are actually all the same individual Okay, so while we're in the Third Testament, let's jump down to chapter 4 and verse 45. It says, well, let me, let me start up here at verse 44. It says, I have manifested my divine thoughts through human spokesmen. They have translated my thoughts into human words and phrases to create a spiritual doctrine filled with revelations and perfect teachings. Now, this is referring to the third testament of the Bible. That's what it means by spiritual doctrine. Um, that's kind of where we're at in our spiritual journey, our human journey uh, here on earth is we are ready to become spiritual beings where we have been materialistic all of this time. We're ready to start to understand things of a spiritual nature. That's kind of um, what uh John was talking about over there when he said that the father would have those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, this third testament of the Bible is actually what's helping us to understand um, how it is that we are to worship in spirit. Um, it says, um, you see that part um, filled with revelations and perfect teachings. Yeah, this third testament is uh, definitely filled with revelations and perfect teachings. But like I said, we make a copy available for you guys to read it for yourself. Verse 45 says, this is the promised comforter. This is that spirit of truth that was announced as coming to tell you everything. 
The preparation is about to begin. The time is coming when you will need guidance from those who are spiritually strong. Those beings with noble and simple hearts will use their wisdom and clarity to guide you. Talking about the comforting spirit, this is actually help from the spirit world. If you've been, you know, reading the Bible for, you know, a while, you've, if you've read a, a large portion of it, of the not only the Bible, but the other books like the apocryphal books and the hidden books and the lost books, and you have what they call discernment, you understand the father's, you know, plan. You understand that during this tribulation, we are promised to have spirit. Uh, help from angels. Angels are supposed to come help us to survive the tribulation. Well, that's what he's talking about here. So you have the promised comforter, the spirit of truth, which will dwell in man. Like we was talking about before, this is what those guys call the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. So we have this, this angelic help coming to us from within and it's coming now for a reason. You see right there, it says the preparation is about to begin. This is talking about the tribulation. So the reason why we have this comforting spirit coming back to us during this time is so that we can prepare for all of these uh, tribulation and apocalyptic events that are fastly approaching. Um, it says the time is coming when you will need guidance from those who are spiritually strong, M meaning, you know, the tribulation itself is not really survivable. There's no human out here that's going to be able to, you know, prepare enough to to survive the tribulation without this angelic help. All of those people out there storing up food uh, and, you know, making all of these, you know, uh, plans, bug out plans and all of that stuff. They, they need to take the time to consult with the father or all of their efforts could be in vain. We're going to have to have spiritual help to survive this. It's not something, you know, you know, just because I got a lot of money and I can buy a lot of stuff that I'm going to be well, well off than somebody else. You know, it's actually the opposite because that person who doesn't have the funds to, you know, store up seven or 14 years worth of food, you know, they're going to be quicker to pray and ask for the father for help. And so they're actually going to be better off. And that's what he's talking about right here when he says there's coming a time when you're going to need guidance from those who are spiritually strong. Those beings with noble and simple hearts will use their wisdom and charity to guide you. We will have to have this guidance through the tribulation. All right, now let's jump down and look at a verse or two out of chapter seven. Um, verse 30 says, this doctrine known by a few and unknown by humanity will soon come as a balm over all who suffer to offer comfort, kindle faith, disperse the darkness and inculcate hope. It shall raise you above sin, misery, pain, and death. Again, it's talking about this third testament of the Bible that we are looking at here. And there's going to be a connection made here between this comforter and this third testament. They're actually all connected, you know, but we're going to find out here in a second. Verse 31 says, it can be no other way for it is I, the divine doctor, the promised comforter who has come to reveal it to you. And so this is important. You remember that our father is actually, you know, oftentimes identified in three parts. You have the father, the word and the Holy Spirit. Well, the word in this case will actually be the third testament of the Bible. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter here. So I think we've done a thorough job of understanding the relationship between the comforter, the father and the Messiah. But there is some additional information, too, so we can, you know, get a even more comprehensive understanding of this comforting spirit. Remember, this is our help. Without this spirit, this comforting spirit, we're not going to be able to survive the tribulation. So this is actually a life or death um, 
subject here. If we don't get this right, um, if there's something that we are supposed to be doing uh, before this uh, comforter comes then, and we're not doing it and we find ourselves devoid of this spirit, then we could find ourselves you know, in trouble or even dying during this tribulation and nobody really wants that. Um, you read about over there in Acts chapter one about, you know, how the comforter came to those guys, but you have to remember how much preparation they had had up until that point. They had been walking with the Messiah every day for almost three and a half years. Could you imagine the level of instruction that those guys had received firsthand from the father, you know, feast days, uh, the law, you know, everything the father wanted them to know they had three and a half years to get it. So it was no surprised that they received this comforting spirit so quickly after the Messiah had left. But what about the rest of us, you know, that hasn't been walking directly with the father for three and a half years? You know, is there something that we missed out of all of those lessons that, you know, that they got? Well, stay tuned. We're going to find out here um, when we jump over into the Old Testament that there's actually some stuff that we're supposed to be doing. But anyway, before we get there, we need to make a connection between this Third Testament, the New Testament, and the Old Testament in relationship to the Comforter. And to do that, we're going to jump down to chapter 38 in the Third Testament of the Bible, and we're going to look at verse 66. It says, the father knew already of the pain and trials that will bow humanity and of the degree of the perversity that men would teach. The arrival of the comforter means for you the opening of the sixth seal. Okay, now I'm going to stop there. Um, I'm going to read on, but you know, it's a lot of information that he's given us so far, so we need to probably unpack it a little bit at a time here. Again, he's talking about the trials of the tribulation, the, the apocalypse, these events that's coming up on the world. We read about in scripture uh, that the father, if it was not for this apocalypse that was coming on, on the world, there will be no need for man to evolve to this level of, of spirituality, you, you know, we'd be happy. But the, the reason why this has to happen, this comforter has to come today and now he's actually already back. But the reason why he is back now is to help us get prepared for this apocalypse. Otherwise, all of humanity would die. We will come extinct. There will be no humans left on the planet. And so for the father to preserve uh, individuals that will be here um, after the apocalypse, he's sending the comforting spirit, angelic help to help us from within. Now, notice this part right here. He says the arrival of the comforter means for you the opening of the sixth seal. OK, OK. And the beginning of a new stage in the evolution of humanity. So now this whole, this, this, the, all of the seals, the seven seals that we hear about in Revelations, you know, there's a lot of speculation on those. Um, but the third testament is, of the Bible is the only book out of all the scriptural documents that you will ever find. I promise you, you can go to the Pseudepigrapher, Lost Books, Dead, Dead Sea Scrolls. The only book that's going to explain what the six seals, the seven seals are, is the third testament of the Bible. No other book tells you about the seven seals. Revelation tells you about them, but they don't explain the timing on which they occurred. And so we're left with no idea. That's why there's so much speculation, so many people guessing because until the third testament of the bible there was no scriptural um doctrine on when these seven seals were open and would, when they would be open and from that we find out that we are in fact in the sixth seal already we are that may be a surprise to some but if you think about it long enough it'll make sense that we are in the sixth seal already and it, you see right here from this verse, it says the arrival of the comforter means the opening of the sixth seal. So at the opening of the sixth seal is when the comforter came back or came down to dwell with man. 
and not just the apostles, but everybody, the spirit went, you know, all around the world. Many people, you know, started to come in contact with this uh, comforting spirit, starting with the sixth seal when the sixth seal was opened. Let's read on. It says, from that moment, a divine judgment was opened for all men. Each life, each work, each step is strictly judged. It is the end of an era, not the end of life. This is talking about when humanity started uh, receiving the Holy Spirit as a whole. Again, I have, to, I have to stress that because somebody will say, well, they got the Holy Spirit back there in Acts, the book of Acts. Um, no, we're talking about all the people, not just in Jerusalem, but all around the world. A lot of people were su surprised by this comforting spirit because, you know, they they were not familiar with, you know, what goes on in Jerusalem. And so it kind of caught them as a shock, you know, as it led them to the scripture or whatever. But the main thing that I want to point out in this verse is how it's saying, I'm going to read it again. The arrival of the comforter means the opening of the sixth seal. It is actually this same chapter, chapter 38, that goes into great detail about these, these seven seals there. It talks about them in stages uh, where the uh, fifth stage was the Messiah. And anybody who thinks about that long, a long time, will, it will make sense to them even before they jumped over and read chapter 38 of the Third Testament. But what I want to bring your attention to is in verse 49 of chapter 38, because it's also talking about the sixth seal, like we read about over there in chapter 38, verse 66. It says, the sixth stage is represented by Elijah. He is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. It is he who goes on his chariot of fire, bearing light to all nations and all the worlds that are unknown to you, but known to me. For I am the father of all the worlds and all the creatures. This is the stage in which you are living, that of Elijah. It is his light that illuminates you. He represents the teachings that have that were hitting, but that are being revealed to mankind in this era. So there is a connection. There is a connection between the comforter and the Elijah spirit that we hear about. You know, um, if you've not studied the Elijah spirit, I would suggest you do so. This is a key player in the end times. And we've been knowing this for a long time, that this Elijah spirit was supposed to come back and dwell with man. Well, what we're finding out by way of the spirit and truth offered in the third testament of the Bible, that this Elijah spirit that we hear about is actually the same as the comforter the holy spirit is elijah and we see that connection made right here now it shouldn't be so surprising um the father actually told us this or gave us a hint about this way back there on mount tabor um when we had the transfiguration um let me jump back to verse 18 out of this same chapter it says moses jesus and elijah there is the road the Lord has marked to help man elevate themselves to the kingdom of peace, light, and perfection. This, this, this is this is big, God. This is important. Have you ever heard of somebody calling the Messiah the second Elijah? Well, turns out this Elijah figure has been that what has been has come down to help humanity um, these 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 many times. And when you had Moses, Jesus and Elijah all standing there on, you know, the Mount of Transfiguration, this was what was point. This was actually pointing to the comforter, Elijah being the comforting spirit um, that would return to help mankind. Of course, Jesus, he you can think of him as taking his rightful position as the father um but Elijah would be in this case as the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost of this time. 
let me just read this verse and then we'll go on out of the same chapter. Verse 20 says, understand the work that Moses completed on earth through the inspiration of Jehovah. Analyze the teaching of Jesus through whom the divine word spoke and seek the spiritual sense of my new revelation whose era is represented by Elijah. So Elijah is representing the spiritual part of this journey. Um, we got the law over there with Moses. We got love with the Messiah. And now we're getting spirit with Elijah. But, you know, one could argue that these are the same individuals. We'll save that for another video. Let's go on and look at something else right quick. We've established a connection between this comforter and this Elijah spirit. We saw that over there with the seven seals, the sixth seal representing Elijah or the comforter. But when we come back up here to um, verse 49 out of uh, chapter 38, remember it was saying that he says, I promised you the comforter in the times of trial, in the times of trial. So we recognize that this comforter would come um, during this tribulation. And we also see that there's a connection between this Elijah spirit and this comforter. So let's come over to Malachi in chapter four. And let me show you something over there. You see right there in verse five. Now, this is the last chapter of the last book of the Old Testament. So I should, you know, point to the importance of it this is kind of the, the last thing that he wanted us to know before we went into the New Testament. But verse five says, behold, I send you Elijah, the prophet before the coming and great dreadful day of the Lord before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord is when we are expecting to see this Elijah figure. And that is exactly what we saw over in the third Testament when he was saying that he would send us the comforting spirit uh, during the times of trial, or you know, I guess it could be easily understand that he, that this comforting spirit will arrive uh, before the uh, time of trial, like we're reading about over here in the book of Malachi. Um, he says, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, so now this is chapter four. And we can come back and we can see about this same figure back here in chapter three. He talks about this individual, um, refers to him as the messenger of the covenant or the angel of the covenant. And, um, well, let's say that we'll, we'll come back to that as we close out here. But you see right here um, in verse five, he's talking about the Elijah spirit coming. This is the angel of the covenant, the Elijah spirit and is the angel of the covenant and the comforter and the Messiah and the father and the spirit of truth. Like we said, all of this stuff is connected here. But look right here in verse four. This is important. We've, we, it is, is good to understand this comforting spirit and what all he has in store for us. But if we're not prepared to receive him, what good is it going to do us? That's why verse four becomes so important because it is necessary that we have this comforting spirit to survive the tribulation. And verse four is telling us what we must do in order to have the indwelling of this comforting spirit or the spirit of Elijah. It says, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I have commanded unto him in Horeb for all of Israel with the statutes and the judgments. For people who read the Bible, this is no surprise that the law is necessary for the survival of the tribulation. I mean, that's why it's here. That's why you have all of those rules. They're not arbitrary and capricious um, in, in the book of the law. Those books are necessary for the survival of the tribulation. That's why they're there in the first place. Well, we read right here that when we remember that law of Moses, the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, then it says, I will send Elijah the prophet. 
before the coming and dreadful day of the Lord. So if we want to have the comforting spirit to help us during the tribulation, we must obey this law that he's talking about, the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him on the Mount Horeb. Now, we've done a lot of classes on this law and what it actually is. You can find those classes, uh, some are short, some are even an hour and a half long as we go into great detail about this law here. Um, one of the other channels even went as far as to, 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 to uh, refer to us as the uh, Indiana Jones of the scripture because we actually dug this out and found out exactly what he was talking about when he talks about the book of the law. Is he talking about all of the Torah, uh, Genesis, Exodus, uh, Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy? No, that is not the law. The law is actually one portion of the Bible specifically. And that's what he's referring to right here when he says, which I commanded unto him in Mount Horeb. There was only one place where the people will receive commandments from Mount Horeb. And that is when they received the Ten Commandments. If you remember the story, you can read that in Exodus chapter 19, how the father told uh, Moses to gather all of the people, sanctify them below Mount Horeb so that they would hear uh, from the father. And they did. Starting in uh, chapter 20, they started hearing the Ten Commandments um, and then um and but they heard a lot of other stuff too, trumpets and uh, thunderings and lightning. And I mean, it was a very terrifying moment for these people. They actually got scared. <laughs> you can read that it down in like verse 18. They actually got scared and went back and they, they said, uh, Moses, you be our spokesman. And, you know, Moses was like, uh, the father wants to talk to you guys directly. But they were saying, you know, if if we continue to listen to him, um, we're going to perish. You know, they, they were dying in the mountain. It, it, they, they were breaking the rules even while they were receiving the covenant. And so they perished. So they elected Moses to be the spokesman. That's why we hear um, the law of Moses, you know, in different places. is because from verse 18 on, the father only gave the commandments, the judgments, and the statutes to Moses directly, and then he went back and told the rest of the children. But anyway, you see right here in the beginning of Exodus chapter 20, you see, um, you see the Ten Commandments. And I don't think I mentioned this, that this is the only time in human history has a large amount of people heard the Father's voice speaking to them directly. This was 2 million people standing on the Mount Horeb and all 2 million people heard the voice of God. That's never happened before. You know, when he talked, maybe few, three or four people heard him and, you know, half of them didn't understand what he was saying. They thought it was lightning or whatever. But here on Mount Horeb, this is when they received the book of the covenant. And that's what's talking about over there in Malachi. You see the commandments here in the first part of chapter 20. When you look at chapter 21, verse 1, you see that you, you're hearing about the judgments. Uh, it says, now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. So they got the commandments, then they got the judgments. Verse 22, uh, verse 22 is also talking about judgments and then it's over in chapter 23 when you start to hear about the statutes you see those down there in about uh, verse 14 and verse 15 when you're hearing about the statutes and that's what uh, uh, um, let's jump back over there and look but that's what Malachi was saying over there when he was saying uh, let's see Let's just jump down here. He says, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all of Israel with the statutes and the judgments. So what he was referring to was the book of the covenant. It starts in Exodus chapter 20 and goes all the way to Exodus chapter 23. And like I said, in, in 23 and verse 14, you hear about the uh, statutes. But if you go on even further past the statutes, look at what it says in verse 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. 
This is the Elijah spirit. This is the comforter. This is the angel of the covenant all being tied together as the same individual here. So the comforter is the Elijah spirit. The comforter is the angel of the covenant like we read about in Malachi in chapter 3. And if we want this angelic help that is necessary for our survival, we must obey the covenant. Exodus chapter 20 through 23 is the book of the covenant. We want this angelic help. We need this angelic help to survive the tribulation. So the one thing that we have to do to ensure that we have this help from all that we've read is go in and remember the law of Moses. Remember the covenant given at Mount Horeb. All right. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. But if you didn't, hit the dislike button. But, you know, let's continue the conversation down in the comment section. You know, if you have something you can add, if you have a question or anything like that or a statement, please put it down there in the comment section and let's keep this conversation going because, you know, this is extremely important stuff. And, of course, we all want to get this right. Shalom.